you talk about published, you, you need to be able to be a prolific content creator. This is where a lot of people get stuck. How do you help to get them unstuck? Because they're afraid, like, I don't know enough. All those imposter monster syndrome things keep popping up or I'm just not good on media. I don't know. And who wants to show up for my writing or my talks anyways? How do you help people get unstuck there? The key idea is that prolific beats perfect and that if you look at anyone who is hugely successful, they're prolific, not perfect. I was at a concert the other night, a band called Muse. They've got two or three really great songs off of each of seven or eight albums and the concert that they do now is an incredible concert, but it's taken 25 years of prolific output to come up with that level of content. The Beatles, they wrote a new song every 12 days for eight years straight. They have a prolific catalogue, not a perfect catalogue. The second thing I would point out is some research and there's a guy called Professor Robin Dunbar who came up with something called the Dunbar's Numbers. He worked out the way the human brain organizes groups of people is into about five people in a family and 15 people who are very close friends and then 50 people who are your friendship circle and then you've got 150, then 500, then 1500. And there's these kind of concentric spheres that you have around you of, of people. And he realized that in order for you to trust someone, to feel that you know who they are, you like them and you trust them enough to perhaps purchase something from them. He found that there was a significant amount of time that someone had to spend getting to know someone and it was about seven hours to make it into the acquaintance sphere. Within a short space of time, something like three months at, at most, you've got to clock up seven hours with someone for them to be in the acquaintance uh, sphere. Google came along and did some research as well called Zero Moments of Truth and they found that people buy from brands that they've had 11 touch points with. So when they look at someone's purchasing history on Google and then they work backwards. How many times did that person get to know the brand? The average number was 10.7. When you think about publishing, it's a very human and essential ingredient that people need to warm themselves up to buying from somebody. So they tend to have to do seven hours and 11 interactions in order to feel comfortable and confident that they know you like you and trust you. There's only a couple of ways that you can do that. You can do it in an analog way, taking people out for dinners and coffees, and it has to be synchronous that you are both in the same place at the same time, or you can use digital technology. You can publish and and you can have asynchronous. So for example, what happened with you and I is that in 2010, I wrote a book called Key Person of Influence. And then in 2022, you discover that book and read that book 12 years later, we have an asynchronous communication. And when we jump onto this podcast, you're feeling quite warm to talking to me. And it's because you've had this opportunity to read the book and you're, you've warmed up to the idea that we're on the same page. So, you know, essentially that's going to be the, the method for building seven hours, 11 interactions with a lot of people across time and space. You've done this before, Daniel, I suspect. <laughs> I wrote crazy. the book on it. <laughs> <laughs> that was very smooth. It was really smooth. I'm very impressed with you for a number of different reasons. Okay, so you kind of took me as, as a skeptical audience member from like, no, nah, I don't want to do this. And you're like, okay, no, that works. And no, he makes a good argument there. And you mentioned Muse, which the, one of their songs is one of my favorite songs of all time, my top 10 songs. I'm like, okay, mention the Beatles. You kind of got it all worked in there. Very well done. And then you said through proving it to me 12 years later, the person that you were time traveled and met me here so that you and I yeah. could have this conversation. You're proving it to us, the value of writing something and putting out content out there. And you're also saying, to people, get over this idea that you need to put out this perfect thing. Because as you cited person after person, if we just keep doing the work, eventually we'll find our hit. Yeah, we will. And on top of that, finding a hit is not even necessarily how people build trust. You've probably never had a huge hit with your best friend. When you think about why is your best friend your best friend, it's because you've clocked up time together, lots of time together. So it's not like your best friend has been sitting there judging everything that came out of your mouth and saying, was that a good conversation? Was it not? a good conversation. It's an ongoing conversation. It's time spent. So when we think about putting stuff out there prolifically, you may never have a hit, right? Let's say you never have an amazing piece of content that comes out. But the truth is that actually that's not how humans work. We work based on just clocking up consistent time together. And if you clock up consistent time with people, they will like you and they'll know you and they'll want to work with you. One quick example that, that I think illustrates this is that if you walk down a busy street and there's hundreds of people going past you and I stop you at the end of the street and I say, describe for me some of the people you walk past. You're not going to remember anyone you walk past. But if you're walking down that same busy street and let's say a friend from high school was on the other side of the road and they just you just caught them out of the corner of your eye, your brain just lights up 
and you're like, oh my goodness, there's Luke. And you go across, you cross the road, you almost get hit by a bus and you go, hey, Luke, how are you going? I haven't seen you for ages, right? And you suddenly you there's a connection. This is how humans work. We work based on the time we clock up with each other. It's not that this person on the other side of the road was remarkably different from every other person on the planet. It's not like they were super tall or super good looking or any of that stuff. It's just you clocked up time with them.